Peter, you've got the European shirt on for Munster this year and the Champions Cup in your left arm. It's a competition you've got a real love affair with in Munster. Yeah, look, we have a lot of history with the competition. Um, you know, the players certainly love when, when this time of the year comes around. Um, you know, fans alike. Um, you know, there's a huge... There's a huge love affair, certainly, with it. Um, you know, the standard of the competition, the so sort of the atmosphere around the games. Um, you know, the, the the standard of the game, the standard of the opposition. Um, you know, they all go through the roof, and um, you know, it certainly isn't any any different this year with the pool that we've picked in. And um, you know, there's always that expectation. Um, you know, from from ourselves, from from fans, from everyone. Um, but it just it just gets it gets harder and harder every year with the, yeah. the standard of, of the play the players the teams the you know the quality of the rugby is uh, is is very impressive. And yeah, you know, you've been kind of I suppose testament to that standard. You've had heartbreak in the knockout stages of the competition <coughs> in the last years as well. Uh, the real hope is maybe to try and get over that semi final hurdle. That's been the real killer. Yeah, look, it's been difficult. It's a difficult one, but. You know, unfortunately, you know, it takes an incredible amount of effort to get to a semi-final, and you know, it doesn't stand for anything now this year. You're back to, you're back to square one. Um, you know, new pool, new, new teams. Um, you know, you're, you're all back to, back to square one, as I said, and you know, you, you do review certainly, and you try and learn your lessons from the, the previous year, but um, you know, now it's back to you know Exeter up first away from home. You know, it probably doesn't get any harder than that realistically, um, with with the standard that they're providing at the moment and you know, how good they've been the last you know, four or five years. Um, you know, they're taking standards to a new height themselves and um, you know, that's our first one up and that's the most important one of them all, uh, is is your next game in this competition. It can be crucial because if you go on your away game and say if you were to pick up no points in that, it puts the team right in the back foot from the very outset. You need to make sure you get points to start. Yeah, look, and easier said than done against a team of that calibre, you know. Um, so, look, we know, every year we know how, how difficult it is. Um but you know, it's it, as I said, the standards is, is just growing and growing every year, and um, you know the the big thing for us now is 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 getting some consistency in our performances and and building our confidence into over the next couple of weeks into into that game. Was that the disappointment about last weekend? You know, going over to Cardiff and just misfiring on the night. You know, given that you had been playing so well the week before. Yeah, so, somewhat. Well, I, I thought our training standard during the week was very good. I thought we reviewed and previewed very well. Um, but we, look, we just we just didn't execute or the plan that we wanted to execute. Um, but it, it sounds like I'm taken away from how well Cardiff played. They were, you know, they they physically they were superb. Um, you know, some superb performances by a lot of their team. Um, and it's uh, you know not to take away from how good they were on the night because they were they were very impressive and they were very difficult to get a foothold in um, and and you know you know we we certainly made a few errors but you know, there was a lot of more force through through good play from Cardiff. And one of the good things about sport, it gives you an opportunity to rectify things very quickly and you can't afford to be in any way complacent about Ulster coming this weekend. So it's a good game to bounce back with, I would think. Yeah, look, you've you've got to get back into it. You've got to get your review done and 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 take your learns and lessons from from the previous week and and move on because, you know, you can't be feeling for, sorry for yourself. You'll you'll end up with a good few defeats back into back, and then it's difficult. So, um, yeah, it's, look, it's a massive game for us this week back in Tone Park. Um, you know, we've we've got a performance. You know, we don't worry about results. We worry about performances, and that's the main thing for us this weekend. Johan was saying on the TV directly after the game last weekend, he said, I take responsibility for how we've played tonight. But as players, I'm guessing you have to share around the responsibility as well after a game like that. Yeah, of course you do. Um, you know, you, you know, a head coach role is, is a difficult place for anyone, I would imagine. I actually couldn't imagine it, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, the, the buck stops with them, certainly. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's... You know the players uh, have, have had a job to do last weekend and, and didn't perform, uh, and and that was that was kind of the extent of it. Um, you know we were given all the tools during the week and we didn't we didn't use them. So look, there's things we both could have done better, but um, 
you know performance and the players and the night wasn't good enough and um you know hopefully hopefully we get a shot this weekend to you know as i said put in a performance is, is what you want to do um, there's no point in saying you want to go get a win that's mm. that's not it's obvious what, yeah. yeah of course but you want to go and put in a performance at home in front of your home crowd that's the main thing in terms of as a group you know things had to be very disruptive last year with you know razzy going out and johan coming in <laughs> midstream has it been good to have a full kind of summer with Johan van Graan this year? I know you were doing away with Ireland, but just as a as a group and as a squad, has it been better to maybe have him there from the outset this year? Yeah, look, I mean, of course it makes sense. You want your the coach who who's going to be bringing you through the whole season to be there from from the outset. Um, so it's been great. Um, you know, I've for me personally, I've had a great enjoyed my preseason. Um, you know, the last couple of years of had niggles or knocks or um, you know missed parts here and there, but I've I've had a f- full preseason, so I'm feeling good as a result of it, feeling fit. Um, and from a wider point of view, you know, it's great to have you know someone his experience and expertise, you know, have an input all year. Um, you know, you got a huge amount of huge bulk of your work done in preseason in preseason. Um, and and it sta- it's certainly something that needs to stand to you for for the whole season and, and hopefully we'll we'll reap some of the benefits that we've we've had some great training over the last kind of nine weeks, ten weeks of preseason and um you know, hopefully it'll stand to us. Did you get yourself a decent break? Because the last twelve months have been hectic. Lions tour, you know, directly into Ireland, Grand Slam, Munster last season, Australia tour is a very hectic twelve month period there. Yeah, yeah, it's busy. Um, you know, all three three of the four Southern Hemisphere teams, uh, you know, away from home. You know, three tours. Um, you know, certainly it was a long few months. And uh, to be fair, Johan, he uh, he gave everyone in the squad five weeks off, whether you were in Australia or not. Um, which is, which was something that we kind of didn't really get before. But he he trusts the guys to go away and come back in in good shape uh, and and use their time well to recover and and get yourself right to to be back fit and and training. Um, you know, on the date we were expected back, and and guys did. Um, you know, guys trained, and uh, and I think it's due to us, to be honest. You know, that that bit of rest, and uh, I suppose where you, where you want to see that is, you know, Christmas after Christmas is when you know after a couple of breaks around then for you know the guys that are around. Um, you know, you want to see guys the freshness to the the spark there, and hopefully that'll stand to us again. Joey Carberry's been adding a bit of a spark. He's a great individual moments even I'm thinking of the run nearly from his own 22 to bring the ball forward last weekend um, lovely little passes we've seen touched him so far how is he actually settling into life in Munster yeah look he, he had a couple of friends who who we would have known for a long time that are with us um, so he moved in with them um, yeah look he, he's he's settling he's settling in great um, you know he's a good kid um, you know I've always spoke very highly of him and it's great to have him on board now. Um, you know, obviously, people forget that he's 22. Um, you know, as an out half, and you know, in a big club, who hasn't had a huge amount of experience at out half, which people also forget. So, I think guys have just got to, people have got to give him a bit of time to to settle in and and to actually run a team at 10, and and forgetting he also has to perform well and and. And win his place amongst some of the some of the quality of out halves that we have in our squad at the moment. You know, our, you know, I suppose we're very lucky in a lot of ways that we've we've a lot of fit out halves who are who are uh, you know very impressive athletes, and we needs to perform well enough to keep out of the team as well. You know, because there's guys who are very hungry for rugby in that position. Yeah, because I suppose despite having Tyler, JJ, Ian available to play. Still, as players, you must have been very excited when you finally got the news that Joey's transfer was over the line. This is a huge get, even if you do have quality in the position already. Yeah, it is. Look, I mean, guys of that kind of standard is the guys you want to hear that you're signing, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I was certainly delighted. But again, he's got to go. And for a young man, it's you know, it is certainly a lot of pressure. And uh, you know, he he knows he's got to perform and perform well enough to keep the other guys out of the team and. Um, you know, there's been a lot of rotation over the last few weeks, and you know, that's the thing is performance is the main thing. So, um, 
you know, he's settled in well and, and, and guys are looking after him, which is, which is good to see as well. And I guess Munster and Ireland fans will be very excited to see eventually himself and Connor working together. And um, Jerry Flannery was saying yesterday Connor is, is nearing a return now at this stage. That's going to be a big boost, particularly if he's back around the start of those Champions Cup fixtures. Yeah, look, you know, Murrah's is more, you know what I mean? He's, uh, he's world class and, you know, they're the kind of guys you need fit and you want fit in your team. Um, but look, we more needs to take his time and and do what's best. Um, you know, if that's another couple of weeks, if it's another, you know, couple of months, uh, I'm I'm not a hundred percent up to speed on it. But what we need is when he does get back that he stays back, and that's the main thing. Um, there's no point in in pushing him, and and we're, I think we're we're extremely lucky with, with the medical staff in Munster. Not only in Munster, but in Ireland, we're we're well looked after, and. Uh, It'll be the case that when he does come back, whenever that is, it's uh, you know he'll be he'll be back for back for good. Hopefully, I was thinking about your former head coach, you know, with Razi and the Springboks and winning in New Zealand. As Munster men, were you delighted to see um, him coach a team to success in New Zealand? Um, yeah, look, it was great. It was great. Um, you know, it takes a lot, especially to win in New Zealand. Um, you know, there was a lot of pressure on them, obviously. Um, and, and to get a performance like that over there, um, you know, it was very impressive. And uh, yeah, look, it was it was it was good to see a performance like that. As I said, it's uh, it's certainly a difficult place to play, and you know, uh, seeing some of the reactions of some of the lads, and obviously Jacques was there, our ex defence coach, and uh, you know, yeah, it was certainly delighted for him anyway. And I suppose you got New Zealand coming up in the November internationals. Everyone seems to be bigging it up. We're very guilty about that in the press as well as you know, top two in the world meeting at the moment. Is that a game that you're relishing as part of the November series, though, Peter? Um, look, there's so much rugby to be played before then. You know, there's so many factors of, you know, you just don't know what goes on. So, uh, you know, injuries, performances, yeah, who knows? So, uh, like, we've got to focus on the next couple of weeks, certainly from... Uh, a club point of view personally um, you know performances are, are key staying fit um, and you know you know who, lo- who knows what lies down the road John Clayton signed his new contract he's going to be staying around for a couple more years at Munster now as well he becomes Irish qualified in the new year as well is he someone that if he makes that decision do you think he's he's international quality Peter? Um, I do believe so yeah he's he's been a super sign- he's superb signing for us um, you know there's He's a guy who just goes about his work, um, you know, and he keeps the head down and, and uh, he, uh, he enjoys his work and uh, he works bloody hard as well, which is, uh, you know, a good sign of a guy. Um, he's a bit bit low at times, but you put up for that for, for some of the performances he's putting in over the last, uh, you know, whatever period of time he's been here, it's been... It's been great having him, and uh, you know, I said to him the other day, it was great for him to to sign on. Uh, you know, three years is, is a great length of time, and uh, you know, hopefully, he can kick on for us. So, on the final note, ask you about this weekend. I mean, what kind of challenge are you expecting from Ulster? Because you know, they've been in a really good run. They're just back from South Africa after picking up a good few points there as well. Yeah, look, <clears throat> uh, I said to Dan outside, it's a uh, you know, it's a, it's a kind of an exciting young group they've got up there, and you know, their performances over the last few weeks have been very impressive. Um, you know, young backline, young halfbacks. You know, John Cooney playing very well for them. Um, has done all last season certainly. Um, you know, so we're expecting a very tough. You know, every time it's a derby in, in Ireland nowadays, it's, it's a massive game, and it's it certainly isn't any different this Saturday. You know, we're going to be expecting a huge test. You know, the caliber of players are bringing, and I suppose the game, the game that they're playing at the moment is certainly different to last year with the. They're certainly more expansive, and you know their ability to strike from broken play is, is is very impressive as well. So you know it's going to be a big test. It's going to be a very interesting game at Thunberg. Best of luck at that one, and best of luck at the Champions Cup as well. Thanks very much.